Hi everyone, this is Dee Keys bringing you a calculator walkthrough for this DPS calculator that I've been working on for quite some time and have finally decided that it's in a state where I can share it with the public and have it be of some use. This calculator has a skill dictionary of nearly 800 skills, including some pet and elemental skills, and allows you to calculate solo DPS because it looks at Might, Vuln, and your other buffs dynamically for the most part. Anyway, on this first page here, there is a short introduction to the calculator and a number of its quirks because there is no way that an Excel spreadsheet can capture all of the intricacies of the Guild Wars 2 combat system. I would recommend reading through this at some point, possibly after you play around with the calculator a little bit and wonder why something isn't coming out as you expect it to. At the very top of the spreadsheet is an overview of all five builds that the spreadsheet can manage at a particular time. I have played around with the spreadsheet accommodating up to nine builds, but the file size was getting a little bit out of control, so I decided to just stick with five so that you can look at DPS for a party. So going across the top, we have the name of the build, which is automatically generated based on your traits and weapons and gear, class, direct DPS and Condi DPS from that build, as well as the DPS total, healing per second for yourself and for your group, and how that healing per second, as well as incoming heals and incoming damage, translate to your time to live. Now, if you don't die during your rotation, this will throw an NA value, which means you survive. Also, this summary sheet will give you average volume maintained by the build, percent fury uptime for yourself and for your group, the average number of might stacks that you maintain on yourself and on your group, as well as any unique group buffs that the build may provide, such as EA, Spotter, or Assassin's Presence. Going to a build sheet, you'll see that there are a number of blue or gray cells, yellow cells, and of course white cells. I color-coded these sheets so that you only need to mess with yellow cells as an end user to see results for putting in a build in a rotation. Starting at the top left, you can choose your class, and it will automatically bring in relevant traits and set this up so that all of these traits will be active, or at least the ones I've implemented will be active when you choose them. Going into gear, there are a number of different sigils, runes, and gear types that you can choose, including, for amulets at least, PvP stats. And to go along with that, you can choose gear with no stats so that you can set this up for a PvP mode simulation if you'd like to compare numerical resen results against what you would see with a test dummy. Some food and some of the runes have some pretty simple assumptions. A lot of those assumptions are noted on the summary page, the first page that I showed you. For infusions, put in the number of plus five infusions that you assume to have, and it will automatically carry through those numbers to your power and other stats. For signets, put in the value of the attribute bonus for power, precision, and so on, all the way through healing power. So at level 80, that's typically 180. And for classes that have a healing signet, you can use a 1 to turn that on, or a 0 or a blank to turn that off. For traits, you notice that there are both yellow and gray squares in this area here. When you select a trait line, it will automatically pull in the minor traits for that trait line. So then all you need to do is specify the major traits. For the adept level, those can be chosen using numbers 1, 2, or 3 in this fourth square of this block of 6. In the fifth square, you will want to choose your master level trait, so that would be a 4, a 5, or a 6. 
and Grandmaster is the sixth box in that section of six squares. And you use a seven, eight, or nine for that area. There really is no limit to the number of trait lines that you have to choose, though since this spreadsheet does not track your cooldowns, there are some rotations that you may come up with where you do need to use a particular trait line for that rotation to actually work. For example, this is a fresh air build, so you need to make sure you select fresh air for this rotation so that you can actually pull it off in combat. If you get greedy and use bolts to the heart, for example, you'll get inflated DPS on a rotation that isn't realistic. Alternatively, you could also turn on an extra trait line and see what that does to the damage. One quirk about this section is that you will get unrealistic results if you don't have full major traits in. The numbers will be a little bit wonky, so make sure you completely fill out your trait line before you look at your damage. You can also turn off a trait line by using a zero and turn it on using a one. It's important to have these numbers here because those ones and zeros are used to name your build up at the top of the spreadsheet in the summary page and on the dps chart which i will show you later so once you have your traits picked out and maybe some idea of what kind of build you're going for you'll want to input your rotation you'll put your rotation into blocks l25 all the way down to l150 or 149 Again, I could extend this out further, but that starts becoming a stress on a program, and I've already had this spreadsheet crash my computer and my tester's computers many times during development. You can start with a blank slate for your rotation and simply type in skill names. So since we have this set up for an elementalist already, we can say start and fire the lava font Meteor Shower, Lava Font again, Overload Fire, and you may want to throw in, say, a Flame Burst, Lava Font, like a good Ellie, and then let's say you want to conjure a Frostbow. Though sometimes you may get your skill names wrong, and your weapon will show a zero here instead of particular weapon. You can go to the skills tab down at the bottom to figure out your skill name. Then since you have a frost bow, you'd want to use ice storm and frost fan. And if you need the CC, deep freeze. And then you'd want to drop your conjure. And then continue on your with your rotation. Again, since this sheet does not check your cooldowns, you may need to reality check yourself by recording this rotation against a dummy to make sure that it's realistic, or even start with a recorded rotation and try and scribe it into the spreadsheet. Now, if you want to load in a rotation, there is an other rotations tab here, which has a number of the rotations that are already in the spreadsheet, as well as some other ones for all the classes that aren't on those five tabs, so that you can quickly get started with a rotation or see what kind of syntax is needed for a particular class. Since I just deleted the whole Dagger Warhorn rotation, I'm going to grab that real quick and put it back in the rotation block here so that I can continue working with this and showing you the spreadsheet. What's displayed to the initial user for each rotation is the weapon that's on 
It's cast in channel time as well as its aftercast, which used to be a little bit more relevant for quickness calculations, but quickness mechanics have changed over time. The time that you're at in your rotation, the field that's down, you can either assume a particular field is down or it will pick up which field is down based on what skills you've guessed. Any might that you've generated for yourself in this rotation, Vuln on target that you've generated, um, a mechanics comet column that means different things for different classes. So for elementalist, it tracks which attunement you're in. For say a mesmer, it attract, tracks the number of illusions that you have up. For necromancer, this is a life force. For thief, initiative, and for warrior, adrenaline. Next is your damage modifiers, which are dynamically calculated based on your skills your traits, and your gear. Your power, which with the current assumptions of the spreadsheet, assume 25 might, but also say for elementalist, also depends on your trait lines and your percent of the skills duration that is in fire attunement. Crit damage, or crit chance, crit damage. Condi, Toughness and Vitality are hidden, and then Healing Power, so that you can see its effect on your healing calculations. Now we have the Damage column, with the Direct Damage starting off. Bleed Damage, Burn, Chill Damage, which is important for Necromancers, Confusion, Poison, and Torment. Following the Damage section, you can see how much healing you're putting out for yourself and for your group and your effective HP which feeds into your time to live calculations. Finally there's your endurance so that if you do dodge during your rotation you can track if you have a dodge available and its interaction with any endurance traits that you may have selected. Once you put in your rotation you can look at your results overview for some basic statistics about that rotation. Total time that it takes, the strikes per second that this rotation has, so if you're looking at rotations in a situation where you have to worry about retail, you may want to consider this number and its effect on your survivability. Total coefficient per weapon, with this being your first weapon swap, and this being your second, which isn't really used for LE or NG, but it is for other classes as well as your total coefficient, and then your direct DPS, lead DPS, uptime, stacks, similarly for burn, confusion, poison, and torment, and your total DPS. Now this number is useful if you have two rotations that are about the same duration, but is not so useful if you're comparing a 30 second rotation and a one minute long rotation. You'd want to use charts for that. Then you have healing per second, and group healing per second. A lot of these numbers also show up on the summary page, as well as your time to live. You also have a block for your uptime of other conditions, as well as damage or stacks when appropriate, as well as uptime and stacks for other boons as well. Finally, down at the bottom, you have a skill priority ranking system that I've been working on a little bit. It's very experimental, but hopefully it can help you pick out which skills in your rotation are the ones that hit the hardest or heal the hardest. For your non-instance, such as Overload Air and Wildfire in this rotation, it will rank these skills so that you know which ones do the most damage per second effort. So the most damage per cast time, essentially. For your instance, the damage that the instant does is divided by a weighting coefficient so that you don't have insane numbers here and so that you can kind of evaluate which instants are important to your rotation and which ones are simply ones that are filler or ones that could be replaced with other utilities that could potentially be more beneficial to your rotation. Similarly, you have the same kind of statistics for healing per second effort. So again, if a skill is an instant, you won't see a ranking. If a skill 
is not an instant, you will see a ranking. Also, the top, any skills that have a ranking of 7 or lower, that is 7, 6, 5, and so on, will be highlighted so that you can quickly and easily pick these out from your list of skills. I highly encourage you to go ahead and look at other build tabs to see what kind of syntax quirks each of these classes have, such as I needed to split up symbol protection or guardian into the hammer itself and the symbol so that the traits were most accurate, even though I'm sure it's still a little wonky. Once you have several rotations in, you can look at the DPS chart to see how much damage each rotation does over a particular time interval. To interpret this graph, you want to look at a particular time in a fight, and the rotation with the highest damage will just simply have the top line. So this is basically a cumulative DPS. So if, say, your Necromancer rotation overtakes your DPS for your rotation at some point, it is at that point when the da Necromancer has done more total damage in the fight than that warrior. So of course, you bring a Kandi Necro for damage itself and the warrior for the might and banners, so it's kind of an unfair comparison. There are a number of options that this calculator has so that you can look at specialized scenarios. You'll want to mess around with the values in the settings tab here, or in the settings column, not in the value column. One of the most important settings here is solo. With a solo setting of zero, you have a certain amount of preloaded group buffs. You can set this to one to turn all of them off. Or if you want some of them, you can go ahead and keep a zero here, then put in a number in the corresponding setting cell above that to overwrite that default. So that way you can look at a group that has, say, most group buffs, but say doesn't have a Mesmer, for example. To get rid of that overwrite, simply blank out that cell. This calculator assumes a heavy armor target, though you can easily change this to a value for a lighter or even heavier armor target, and your damage will scale accordingly. There are some, some boon and scholar bonus uptime assumptions here. I haven't quite factored in effective HP into scholar bonus uptime, so if it's something that a lot of people are interested in, it would be something that I would entertain as a possible improvement to this calculator in the future. You also can add a fractal potion to see what that does to your damage. as well as change the size of your target's hitbox. So this would be with a large setting versus a small setting. Again, not a lot of these rotations scale with hitbox, but the elementalist does a little bit. There is some support for cleaving targets. So it will provide the average damage done per target as opposed to average total damage. You can specify a default field or leave it blank. A popular option would be a fire field so that you can blast might in it or whirl in it or use projectiles through it for more burning damage. Again, if you don't want to use that option, simply leave it blank. In previous metas, where there was a lot of pre-stacking and a lot of prep for each fight just to make sure that the burst is strongest at the beginning of the battle, there's an option to nullify the cast times for some skills that are frequently used at the start of battle, such as Feel My Wrath, or Signet of the Wild, or even Signet of Rage. 
this team DPS option here will enable you to specify if you want the DPS from other party members who get buffed by Overload Air or by Venoms from a Venom Share Thief to go to that Ellie or to that Thief or just be ignored so that you can look at personal damage that would be against the or would match up against the combat log for say that elementalist. I typically leave it at one so that you can look at that total damage contribution from that class. There's also assumptions for crippled uptime, unscathed uptime, enemy CC-ness, as well as the amount of time that an enemy is moving. Since these uh, conditional modifiers are a little bit harder to track, I decided to just simply make assumption parameters for them. Then you finally have a few survival parameters so that you can get an idea of your time to live in different situations. Then some other system parameters for things that are there due for my experimental research on skill rankings or Guild Wars 2 combat engine parameters that have changed over the years. On the skills tab, you'll find an alphabetized list of all of the skills that this calculator recognizes. You can sort them or filter them by class, weapon, other labels that this skill might have. Then you can also see weapon strength, cast time, the coefficient per strike, and the number of strikes by default, as well as the total coefficient and coefficient per second so that you can judge skills for a direct damage rotation pretty easily. Then you have some healing parameters, whether that skill is a blast or a whirl finisher or provides a field, and how long that skill persists in combat. You'll also have feedback for the mechanics column depending on the class, and then you'll have information on the conditions applied, boons applied, by that skill, if that skill scales with quickness, if that skill is a block or an evade, how many targets that skill cleaves, how much endurance that skill restores, and the base cooldown for that skill, even though this information isn't really used by the calculator right now. If you don't see a skill in this list and you find it really important to your rotation, I would recommend either using an approximated cast time and adding it yourself by copying and inserting a row and then renaming it and re-alphabetizing the sheet. Or if it's something that might have more general use, I can definitely look at doing research on it and adding it myself so that everyone has access to it. Anyway, thanks for watching this quick introduction to my calculator and I hope a lot of people find this useful.